you know, uh, they don't really understand. But there's a reason for that. The reason God encourages people to wait until marriage to have sex is because when you have sex outside of marriage, you run a very high risk of messing things up. Now, this is particularly true for men. Men tend to imprint off of their early sexual experiences, much like a bird. Some of these birds, these cranes and stuff, they imprint on the first thing they see after they're born. I don't know if you, you, you know about this, but there's some animals that when they're born, the first thing it sees, it imprints on and thinks it's its mama. So if this, these stupid cranes are born and a chicken's around, it's going to follow the chicken and ignore its mother. And, and professionals who deal with these animals have to be very, very careful not to be seen. Or if there's, I've watched them work with them while they're actually dressed up like gigantic cranes to get around them because they're not the brightest things in the world. <laughs> you know, they're like, it's mama, you know, and they'll follow it everywhere. And, and men tend to imprint off of their early sexual experiences. If a man's early sexual experiences are in the context of lust, which is what they are outside of marriage. It's not really about love, it's about lust, it's about heat, it's about the backseat of a car, it's about someone they don't really know. They tend to imprint on that. They tend to imprint on the sex and not the girl. Are you following me? Uh, it's like when they have this, you know, these early orgasmic experiences, it's like their psyche goes, whoa, what was that? And it starts taking pictures. You know, this is because they want to remember. They want to, and they imprint off of this. And that's why a lot of guys, they get stuck here. That's why a lot of men are constantly, even in their marriages, are trying to recreate a lust environment. Trying to get fulfilled sexually as a married man. Trying to force their wives to do things that a lot of them are very uncomfortable in doing. Why are they doing that? Because they're trying to recreate this thing. They're trying to recreate this thing. See, if a man's early sexual experience is in the context of marriage where he falls in love with this girl and all these people gather together and they all approve of it and they have this wedding and, and they're in a church and their God approves of it and all their friends and family approve of it and they have the biggest celebration of their life and then on their wedding night and on their honeymoon he starts having these first experiences you know now he's he's imprinting on the girl and he connects to the girl at a very deep level that's why people who wait until they're married to have sex have a fraction of the divorce rate of the rest of the world. Because he's imprinting on her as opposed to just sex. I, I met a man and not too long ago who, who told me uh, after a session, he says, you know, I, I got a problem. I said, what is it? He says, I, I'm just not interested in sex. Uh, you know, which to a Puerto Rican is very odd. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to... It's like speaking Swahili, man. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, what do you mean? He says, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not interested in her. And then she's really upset with me. And I said, well, are you never interested in sex? He says, well, you know, if we, if we go out and have a nice dinner and go to a hotel or something, then, 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 I, then I can get into it. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Were you a virgin when you got married? He goes, no. And I says, uh, were you pretty sexually active? You know, his eyes kind of lit up. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I said, why don't you tell me about it? What would be a typical experience? Oh, you know, I'd, I'd find these women and pick them up in bars and take them out for dinner and go to some hotel. I said, do you see what you've done? You've so imprinted off of that that you constantly try to go back there. You try to go back there. In fact, psychologists today, my whole sex culture that you get from experts is all lust-based because they assume virtually everybody's already done this. So they try and encourage people to keep recreating and keep fantasizing and keep imagining and all this other kind of stuff. And, and it can be very, very destructive. And men can have a really hard time really, truly connecting with their wives. Can you get past that? Yes, you can. And I'm going to show you how. But you just got to understand it's going to be different for you than for everybody else. Same was true with women. They also imprint, but they imprint in a different way. It's not so much on the sex as so much what happens after the sex. And when women have sex outside of marriage, nothing happens after sex. There's no connection. There's no follow-up. They imprint on that sex equals nothing. Sex means nothing. That's why so many women, married women have such negative attitudes about sex. What I was talking about last night, how this is such a key thing, they don't even comprehend it because they have learned falsely 
that sex means nothing. If a woman waits until her wedding night and sees how that is how she connects with this guy, she understands this means everything. This is a key. This is a very fundamental thing. Uh, particularly, uh, you feel very bad for women who've been sexually molested because not only uh, did th does it mean anything, their whole experience was forced on them. And th that so has such an impact. Those early experiences are so important. It's not like God is embarrassed about sex. God is not a prude. He's seen you naked. He can handle it. <laughs> it would really freak me out. But he can handle it. Some people say, yeah, you shouldn't have sex before me. Yeah, it's just puritanical nonsense. No, 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 no. This stuff has a huge impact on people that a lot of you will struggle with this for the rest of your life. I'm going to show you how to help you with the struggle, which is not what you want to hear. You want to hear how you just fix it and it'll all go away. It won't probably just all go away. You will struggle with this for the rest of your life. All the more reason you need to tell your children what I'm about to tell you. So they do this right. It's a matter of like metabolism. You know how some people, they can eat anything they want and they never gain weight? You know, we all hate those people. You know, they never have to think about it. it just, it's natural to them. They can eat anything and they stay slim all the time. Then there's the rest of us. We so much as look at food, we gain five pounds. What is the difference? We can still be at a healthy weight, but it's a lot harder for us. It's a lot more work for us. A lot more energy for us to get into a healthy place. What I'm talking to you about has to do with sexual metabolism. If you do this right in the beginning, those people have an automatic, natural, healthy metabolism. And they carry it with them throughout their whole lives. That's why these people usually stay married forever. These guys who get married, you know, 18 years old, you know, like Debbie and I did, and, and die at 103, you know, with just what, it's, they have this healthy sexual metabolism because they didn't get all messed up. And everybody else struggles. That's not to say you cannot have a good sex life. You can. You can have a wonderful sex life. It's just for a lot of you, it's going to be more uh, deliberate and you're going to have to work at it a little bit harder than others. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm not trying to discourage you, but I'm not going to whitewash this to you. That's why you want to encourage your kids, wait, for the love of God, wait. And particularly for women, not only psychologically, they have now determined uh, through research that women physically do not respond the same after they've had multiple sexual partners. Uh, women typically when they have sex, uh, they release uh, a chemical called oxytocin into their bloodstream. It's, 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 it gives them this buzz and it helps them to connect emotionally. It's the same chemical that's released in a woman when she breastfeeds a little baby and it helps her to connect. They call it the bonding chemical. They have measured that women who have multiple sexual partners, they start releasing less and less oxytocin. Just a physical thing. I mean, this is really dramatic for women. If physically, they can't even get the same buzz. You know, it's not worth it. You can make it work. You can have a healthy sex life. I'm going to show you how to do it. But all the more reason you want to encourage your kids, wait. Do this right. Don't tell them sex is wrong. Sex is wrong. Man, I told my kids sex rocks. <laughs> Man, sign me up, Jack. I like this. <laughs> All right? But do it the right way. If you don't do it the right way, they can struggle. Some of you are struggling now. Some of you will struggle.